Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Delmar again, and today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos on AR Foundation with AR Kit. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the results that you see playing behind the scenes, which is a demo that I created by grabbing the Blend Shape Visualizer, which is sending the information from within AR Kit in a form of Blend Shapes over to Unity. Unity gets it, and then we grab that information and apply it to the skin meshes that are assigned to this 3D model. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the demo that I have in here. I'm just going to go ahead and run it on my phone so you guys can see the results. So what I have right here is a demo of the scene that I'm building. So this scene is, as you can see, this is me. You can track facial expressions. I can open the mouth. And I still need to polish it a little bit more, but it works. It works really well if I go far. I can talk really fast and move my nose, close my eyes, open my eyes. Everything works and I'm also rotating my face and, and that part works. I also wanted to try this with a different model, so which is the slug that Unity provides in their demos. So you can see that here is also working. I can also speak and get close, get far, and then everything, everything just works really well. So what I want to show you today is I want to show you how I, I actually configure that, how I make it work. So this demo right here is going to be available in Patreon and I'm going to make it available like I always do in GitHub right after that. But this right here is a scene that I created just basically to mask, to, to create the mask and, and basically position them and, and have the right sizing on them so that I can basically see all of them. So my goal is to have many masks in this scene and then make sure that everything is scaled properly. So in this case, I have the slug that you see on the video. I also have an AR face, which is a component of the AR Foundation. I also have what, what I call the Blend Shape Visualizer. And this is based on Unity examples on AR Foundation. I just made some tweaks and also extended it by adding a scriptable object. So I'm going to show you that implementation. Also, if you go into the, the Gunam, in this case is this monster right here. I have kind of the same setup. I have an AR face. I also have a Blend Shape Visualizer. And I also have a scriptable object, which I can go in and and basically what this object allows me to do is to map, you know, parts of the face, which in this case were rigged and they were added in a in an application like Maya 3D, where they go in and add the different blend shapes. And what what I ended up doing is I didn't want to do what AR Foundation examples did. They they just have it hard coded in their code. And what I wanted to do is basically configure this through through a scriptable object, so it was you know it could be configurable. Because in this case, like if we look at the this log head, you can see that the blend shapes in the skin mesh render, their name blend shape on uh, blend shape two, blend shape two, and then eyes lowercase, and 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 they're not really consistent with the gonam here. Which if I go and look at the head mesh, this one has the word expression at the beginning, and also the the first the first letter of the second word is capitalized. So. I, I'm like, well, we're going to be running into a lot of issues if I want to create an application that was relying on specific names. So if you go into the scriptable object, you can see that these are basically coming from ARKit. They, they give you, these are the descriptions, which are called blend shape locations that AR Foundation and ARKit actually provides. So I wanted to have a mechanism that we could map, okay, if I if ARKit is sending me brown down left, I'm going to map that to the expression. If, this one is the one that is selected, then it's, it's going to be mapped to the expression. So the system that I built basically takes care of that, and you can go here and then add any mappings. If you want to you know, have less mappings, you can just change this to a 10. Let's say that your face only has 10 different blend shapes. You can also make that work, or I can do, and then use the 52 that I have. So if we go back here and look at, in this case, I have all these different blend shapes, and the other component as well has all these different blend shapes. So how do I actually map the code and how do we communicate with the skin mesh render? That's what I'm going to show you next. So if we go into the slot, for, for instance, and I look at the blend shape visualizer, you can see that this has a bl blend shape visualizer script. It requires a component, which is an AR face. We need the AR face because we're really dealing with a face. It basically creates a mesh. Uh, basically, the, it doesn't create a mesh in this case because we are use we're providing a mesh, but we need information about the, the face so that we know what information to basically track when it comes to the face. So in this case, I have what's called the blend shape mappings. In, in the mappings, in my case, is a scriptable object. If I go here, you can see that this has a scriptable object. It's called blend shape mapping. It inherits from that. I also have the prefix because you saw that in some instances, 
one, you know, one of the skin mesh renders had a different prefix. So I wanted to be able to make the, you know, so you can actually override it. So this one has the blend shape to that, which is the one that the slot needs. But in the other case, like if I wanted this one, which is this one has, if I look at it again, this one has expression bl blender blend shape. So I could just override it in here and it's basically it's going to take care of that. And then what this system does is when you create a new blend shape, it's going to automatically create the file that you see. And I can show you that right here. Like if I wanted to, let's say that I wanted to create a file because I, you know, I had different mappings. We can just go here and create and then click on blend shape mappings, mappings, and it's going to create a file. Maybe this is monster. We can just call it Dracula. Maybe this is for Dracula. And Dracula doesn't have a mappings of 52. It has maybe a mapping mappings of 10. And that means that there's only 10 blend shapes on the Dracula face. So you can go here and change it. But you can see that this one automatically is prefixing blend shape 2. And that's because the code has blend shape 2 right now hard coded. The reason why I did it as a as a constant is because I'm doing an initializer here. So this is using the initializer for a list. So if I make this basically public and a string, it's not going to work because this is expecting, you know, it, it doesn't like anything that is non-static if you want to set it by default. So I ended up doing this and, and it's okay if I have to go here and then hard code it. I think that's fine because you're going to be generating those files. And then at some point we can change that and maybe abstract that out into a different, you know, a different file. But for now, that's how it works. I also have the coefficient scale. This is going to be the scale that we're using to basically to multiply the value that we get from ARKit so that we can get the right coefficient on the skin mesh. And then I have all my different mappings. I decided to use a list of a type mapping and I couldn't use, I wanted to use a dictionary, but you can't really have a dictionary on a scriptable object. It just won't serialize. You won't be able to see it here in the inspector. So I ended up going into the Unity forums and somebody suggested using a serializable class that basically has two properties. One is going to be the key and one is going to be the value. In my case, I'm using the ARK blend shape location, which comes from the ARK namespace. And if we go here, you can look at the, actually, I need to go into the peak definition. You can see that this is all the different definitions that the Unity Engine XR ARK namespace provides. You can also find those definitions if you go into ARK documentation. It's going to map exactly to that. So that's what the key is, and then that's what the name, and then the list of types is going to be the list of mappings. And then I'm basically just creating those automatically so that you don't have to basically map 52 different parts of your face manually. Instead, when you create it, it's going to create the, you know, the 52 automatically, and then you can go ahead and remove the ones that you don't need. The other thing that, that this will actually do, you don't need to remove the ones that don't exist. What you can do is just you know use the ones that you need. And then if the system doesn't find, let's say, 10 through 26, because those names are not blend shapes on your skin mesh, in that case, it's just going to ignore them. It's not going to apply anything, any, you know, any changes to the blend shape. So you can do it either way. I think either way is going to work. So that's how that piece works, and that's how basically I'm creating the scriptable object. So if we go back in here, that's the type that I'm serializing in here. That way you can go into the actual model, 3D model, in our case, going to be a face monster. You can associate the mappings just like I did here. If I wanted to associate it with the Dracula one, I could do that or I can undo. And then you also need to tell the system where the skin mesh is. In this case, it's, go it's going to be on the head mesh. So that's what I'm telling the blend shape visualizer that the head mesh has the actual blend shapes, which also has the skin mesh. So if we go down here, I also have a variable for the skin mesh render. That's how I'm mapping that out. And these are two serializable. I also need the ARK face up system because that's going to be what gets me the information from the from ARKit. Basically, it's going to say, you know what? You're moving your, your jaw, so I want to know what the value of that blend shape is that is mapped to your jaw. The next thing that I have in here is a dictionary with an ARK blend shape location. It also has an integer. And then I'm using this to basically create the mapping so that we can assign those to the skin mesh. I also have a variable for the AR face and it's of type face. And then when the awake method gets executed, I get that component, which you saw that is at basically attached to this object here, which is an AR face. And then I do, I create, I call create feature blend mappings. This is similar to what the AR foundation example is doing. And what I do here is I'm just making sure that the skin mesh render is set, that the blend shape mappings are set. If they're not set, there's really no need to call to do anything here because that means that you haven't really associated the mappings yet. So it's not ready to be consumed. 
But if you have already associated and you have a skin mesh render associated, then, then we're okay. Then I'm gonna go into this dictionary and I'm gonna create all the different keys based on the based on the mappings that I have in my in my scriptable object. Then I have a couple methods in here. One to basically set the skin the skin mesh ba basically if it's if it's gonna be visible, if it's not gonna be visible based on the skin mesh render being populated or not. I also have a method here to update the visibility because if we're not tracking right now, there's really no need to show this information. So as, as soon as we, we have face tracking going and we're also ready, ready for the air session, then that's when we're gonna make these visible. The next thing that I also do is I get a reference to the air, basically the face manager. I check to make sure that the face manager it is set. If it is set, I get the system from the AR kit face subsystem. I update the visibility. I also change, I also wire myself to the update method on the actual face. And then I just change, I just check also and add a binding to the on system state change. Then I update the visibility here. If I get any changes on the AR session, I also change on the on the on update method, which I'm binding to the face. So if you're moving your face, this method is gonna get executed because there was a change on the face. And when that happens, I'm gonna check, okay, I'm gonna update the visibility and I'm also going to be mapping to the face feature. So in this case, I'm going to be mapping to what I'm getting from the ARKit blend subsystem. So it's gonna tell me, okay, what is the coefficient for the for that system? So it's gonna tell me all the different blend shapes that are in there. And then I'm basically gonna loop through every single one of the blend shapes that ARKit is telling me about. And then I'm gonna to try to get the value and then I'm gonna set that value on the skin mesh render. So in that case that we, we won't be able to get a value from the from the actual skin mesh. This is gonna try to set it, but it's not gonna do anything because the skin mesh doesn't have it. So that's what I say like in here, like if you go into one of these and if you had a value here that your skin mesh didn't have, then it's not gonna, it, nothing is gonna happen. It's just going to ignore it and it's just gonna continue on. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to say, to show you, I can also show you that this scene right here, this project has three different scenes. One is gonna be the mass set up in here, like I show you. And I also have a monster blend shapes, which is basically the scene that I'm using to build. So if I go into file and then build settings, you can see that I have the monster. I also have this lot. In this case, I have this one check because I was building that one last. And then all I do here is I have an AR session, AR input manager. In the AR session origin, I also have an AR session origin a script that has the camera associated with it. And I also have the AR face manager, which I show you in the script that I'm also getting. And then I have the face prefab is the gonam in this case, because this one is going to be for that monster. And then I'm just telling the system what is the maximum face count. If you wanna capture multiple faces, you can set this to a two. And then if you have you know, somebody else with you, it'll, it'll also work with both of you. So, and then in the other scene, I also have the same thing. It's basically the same setup. It's just I'm using a different prefab. And all these prefabs are set up the same way, so make sure that you follow the structure. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. And also be sure to check out Patreon because I'm gonna be posting this tonight and it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be available for everybody else in a few days. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out LearnXR.io where I'm basically doing training on VR and also AR. And if you have additional questions about that, please let me know as well. And also be sure to check out my patreon.com site where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.